Is the Worker Harrier tournament ready out of the box? Right away, there's plenty to like with this blaster. However, the more time I've spent with it, the more some concerns have started to creep in. Let's start with performance though, and I've had a little bit of a disparity for FPS compared to other results I've seen posted online with the higher powered spring provided in the box. You can see not only are the numbers lower than expected, but also the spread is far more significant. In part, thanks to the occasional really low shot here, but even with those removed, the numbers are lower than anticipated. And this is where I should mention that I took these readings after after I'd used the blaster for a while, both testing at home and at a game. So it's possible that repeated use has lowered performance far quicker than it should, and a relubing might help. Or perhaps I have a lemon. Either way, it was concerning to me. And when we moved on to groupings, at 40 feet, things seem solid, but at 75 feet, they're what I would call acceptable out of the box. The included scar barrel here is definitely appreciated, but something that doesn't show up well on camera is that sometimes the blaster felt inconsistent in use. Some of that I was able to narrow down to worn darts at games, but even at home when using nice worker HEs, it felt like the feeding wasn't always the smoothest, and some of the shots felt lacking because of it. This again may be me having a lemon, but still important to reference for all of you. Now I don't want this to sound all doom and gloom, because despite those issues, the blaster still felt good to use. So let's talk a little bit about the build. It's solid, and it feels solid. I'm not worried about it breaking under heavy use or working it too hard and causing a component to fail like I do with some other blasters. It's got things that I'm starting to expect as standard now, like a flared magwell, skinny pusher, picatinny rail for a priming grip of your choice, and spring swaps that don't require complete disassembly, but also adds a few things I don't see elsewhere. The first is a priming return spring, so the breech will automatically close if you prime the blaster and let go without closing the breech. The other is my favorite. I've been wanting more companies to adopt threaded barrels, and Worker is finally making it happen. And that makes for easy, toolless barrel swaps, and I love it. There are some things I believe fall under the personal preference category here as well. Like, why is there a random gap in the trigger guard that you can dig your finger into during use? Also, the prime return spring. I'm not the biggest fan of it. If you have a tendency to reload with the blaster prime to open your breech, you'll need to relearn to not do that because the breech will close on you when you let go to grab a new mag. And while this doesn't prevent you from just chambering a dart after that, it's an extra added motion, which can be an important time loss in the tournament. And if you want to remove that spring, the breech can slide open if you tilt the blaster upwards without it, leading to double feeds, which makes leaving the spring in the better option for me. A plus for me, though, is how much of the unnecessary parts can be removed from this blaster. Plenty of people like having Picatinny rail and lots of it, but for me, I don't have a purpose for it, so being able to remove all of it is great. And the same goes for the knuckle duster grip. Though it does make the grip slightly shorter in return, I'll gladly trade that for the surprising amount of weight it removes in total. An issue that I don't think will come up in games often, but is good to know, is that if you hit the back of the blaster with enough force, the catch will disengage and the blaster will fire. So if you dive into cover and bump your blaster hard enough, you may lose a dart. I'm realizing this video is probably coming off pretty critical, but I think that's the point of this series, to find the things that could be problems when you run a blaster the hardest. No blaster is going to be without faults. I'm not searching for the perfect blaster in these videos. I'm looking for the threshold of what's acceptable for tournament play out of the box. And even with all the notes I have for the Harrier, also taking into consideration that mine may be a lemon compared to others, I would still say this blaster is tournament ready out of the box everything I encountered was manageable on the field. There were no jams, no failures, no major fear of the blaster not working randomly. It's important to remember that we can be critical of things and still like them. I mean, I like the Harrier.